Okay guys, time to continue on with this discrete amplifier build. If you saw my other videos about this, I'm kind of just cobbling this together and going through the circuit as I go. And uh, hopefully I learn, pick up some uh, good tips, hopefully you guys do as well. Or just enjoy me hacking my way through the circuit. In the last video, I think we talked about current sources. At some point, we talked about biasing this. And what I want to do is take out these diodes and replace it with a uh, circuit such as this, which is our biasing circuit. Now let's adjust the bias. I've heard it referred to as a bias servo or DC servo, something like that. But all it is is a transistor with a simple biasing circuit, this being a potentiometer, which adjusts the uh, voltage at the base, up or down. And that, of course, affects the conduction of the transistor. And so the current going through the transistor would be adjusted up or down, depending on the setting of this here. So in other words, if we adjust this down, so this voltage drops here, we're going to, actually, the voltage would increase if we're, uh, you know, lowering the resistance. So more current will be shunted through the base of this transistor and turn it on more. So what I've done is I've taken out the diodes and set the circuit up here. And as before, I'm testing it as I go along, so make sure everything's working. And I, right now I'm just using a 9-volt battery and an LED. The camera doesn't really pick it up, but as I... I don't know if I can make that so you can see it better or not with my finger, but as I... I don't know if you can see it get brighter as I adjust it. Now it won't go out because even if I adjust this so the transistor is off, some current's still going to go through this resistor network here. And for the amplifier, that's good because we don't want this to ever completely open the circuit because that'll turn both transistors on and you know they can. Uh, blow them up you can blow them up so uh yeah the circuit normally in a commercial amplifier they'll try to limit the range that you adjust this so you know if you the weekend warrior or whoever gets in there and starts messing around with a bias adjustment you don't want that to go real high and you know blow out the transistors and sometimes they'll add like a, another resistor here, so they want to limit the range of this control. And I've seen in amplifiers where they take this out and just put a resistor here. They figure the optimal resistor for the bias current they want in their output circuit, and they just put a fixed resistor, and you cannot adjust the bias without, you know, taking that resistor out. And uh, kind of annoying because you can't adjust the bias that way. So, this seems to be working all right. Probably, I'm not going to show you the values yet because I'm probably going to have to tweak it for the circuit. Tweak it for the circuit. But I am going to, uh, like I said in the other video, I'm going to put a current source in and the amplifier transistor transistor in uh, either here or here okay we did the biasing stage there's the biasing servo and i should mention that this is normally bound to the heat sink so it thermally tracks the output transistor so it, what that does is keeps the bias stable Otherwise, without connecting it to it, the bias current would change. 
and that could be bad, potentially bad. And here is the current source down here and up here is the amplifier and this is kind of temporary because when I put the front end on this amplifier it will change you know, eliminate some of these resistors and things even down here with the current source now again I could have put the current source up here and the amplifier down here it doesn't really matter but it does affect how I set up the front end of the amplifier alrighty well it's hooked up to power split power supply turned it all the way up and turn it on and uh, nothing's happening here the voltage is all the way up that's current in the upper section current in the lower section so there's really no bias or it's too s small for that meter you can see that LED is on so the current source LED is getting current through it now let me adjust this biasing here and nothing happening okay turned it all the way one way now I'll go all the way back ooh just pegged current limited to one amp so it it hit maximum but we want to set that we'll just set it like something small like that and let's see what's happening on the other transistor well very good we're getting the same amount of bias current because both transistors are conducting and there's nothing really connected between them to conduct so that's that's good and nothing got hot here nothing smoking so it's not those little transistors that are doing the conducting yep they're getting warm okay so far so good now I'm going to hook up a load and see what it does with the signal all right now it has uh, this 8 ohm resistor connected across the output and I'll check the bias again upper section okay it's not equal that means we have a uh, we have a DC on the output And it's not a lot because this is not hot yet. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, see what kind of waveform we get here. There's the waveform. And it is quite a bit distorted. That's triangle. Let me turn that off. This is getting really warm. And uh, let me couple this output here to DC. Okay. So turn power on. Wow, it went off. And it's actually dropping. So we have a significant DC on our output. That's what you would call a broken amplifier. It needs some work. Let's see what happens here. Well, of course, there's our waveform on the DC offset. And I adjust the trigger, it comes back. Okay, well, it does sort of work. I'm actually surprised it worked that much, just throwing parts in there. Didn't really take any measurements and uh, kind of guessed at the resistors and everything. So obviously, 
it needs uh, some tweaking done. So we have that huge DC offset. So, uh, well, the video is going to get long, so I'm going to call it quits here. And I'll come back and we'll look at the uh, front end of the amplifier. And I don't know if I'm monkey with this or not. Get it tweaked. But we will look at the uh, differential pair for the input. After that, I have to get this thing uh, a negative feedback connected and after I do that I'm sure it's going to be completely unstable and oscillate and everything then we'll have to look at compensation and then we'll do some tests on it to see if it's going to be stable into inductive or I should say reactive loads and uh, you know check distortion and everything if it is stable there then it's a decent amplifier if not, it would require some more tweaking. Okay, well, I'll wrap it up here. And uh, like I say, in the next installment, it may not be the next video because I have some other things I want to do. But when I, the next installment of this uh, discrete amplifier build, we'll uh, continue on with uh, getting this thing going. All right, thanks for watching.